Welcome everyone to the AIHM Friday Wellness Webinar. Um, we are just thrilled today to have Monica Eldon with us. Um, she'll be speaking on how to listen to the wisdom of your body, a transformative process for healing and restoring balance. So for those of you who are just coming in for the first time, the Academy of Integrative Health and Medicine is a global interprofessional integrative health association working to transform healthcare, body, mind, spirit, community, and planet. And we started our wellness webinars um, and Meditation Mondays back in March um, when COVID first started. And it's just been a wonderful way to bring our community together and to share resources with the integrative health community and with patients and um, just the larger global community. So today I'd like to welcome our special guest, Monica Eldon. Monica is a licensed marriage family therapist, a coach and corporate trainer with masters in integral counseling psychology from California Institute of Integral Studies. Uh, she combines evidence-based practices informed by mindfulness to foster sustainable change. And um, she has her certification in intuitive medicine and has completed the professional positive neuroplasticity training with Rick Hansen. Um, Monica is a member of AIHM and we're just really thrilled to have you here, Monica, and um, for all you're going to share with our community today. So welcome. Thank you so much, Tabby. I'm really delighted to be here today. And I'm, I'm so, you know, I have this passion for um, self-care for healthcare professionals, having worked in healthcare for many, many years and knowing that we provide so much service and focus on other people. It's just a, a pleasure and a delight and an honor to really help healthcare practitioners focus on their own well-being. Well, we are definitely dedicated to that as well. We've really made that a priority within the academy. Um, AIHM takes that self-care really seriously. And um, so it's gonna just be a wonderful um, offering and treat for our community. So I'm looking forward to your presentation. Great, thanks. I'll start. Um, I'll start sharing right now the slides, and what we're gonna do. Well, actually, before I even tell you what we're gonna do today, I'd like you to just take a few deep breaths. I'd like you to just get yourself here, get yourself present. You can keep your eyes open or closed. For some of you, you're watching this live um, Pacific time, you're in the middle of your day, just letting your day go as you breathe, bringing yourself present. And I want to take a moment to invite you to really acknowledge yourself for giving yourself this time for all that you do for your community, for your patients. So if you can really breathe in a little gratitude for yourself in the next breath. Yes. And when you are ready, open your eyes if they were closed. So um, one of the things I do is micro practices and that was a micro practice. Um, I invite my clients to take mini breaks throughout the day. And this is really based on the neuroplasticity training that we make um, new neural pathways when we do things. Um, doesn't have to be a whole 45 minute sit, although that does give um, benefits that we know about. Um, but it's these 20, even 20 seconds of um, bringing your body into a parasympathetic state that helps create the pathways that shift into calm and focus. So that was an example of one that you can use during your day in between patients. So for those of you who are alive and staying till the end, I have a guided meditation that I've created specifically to address stress and burnout and trauma for those who are healthcare practitioners. Um, and you'll, I'll give you a free coupon code at the end that you can go to my website and download it. Um, and it is my thank you to you for all of the work that you do. So let's look at what we're gonna do today. Um, three 
uh, focus, three things to focus on for today. So this is an experiential uh, practice today uh, so that you can know what these benefits are of connecting mind and body through embodiment and, and body-based practices. Um, and to be able to learn how to talk about them and share them from experience um, with your patients, with your community and to do them for yourselves. So I'm gonna take a quick look at some of the specific benefits of practice. Um, so we're looking at regulating the nervous system um, and shifting into a parasympathetic state so that we can release stress, anxiety, and trauma. I've had several clients this week who come to me regularly to look at reducing stress and I do it um, I, I have been trained in CBT and I use that too, but really without a body-based approach, I don't think we can make the full sustainable change that we're looking to make. And so with anxiety, it's a great intervention. I'll be asking um, my clients just as they're talking about something stressful to notice what are you feeling right now in your body as I say this? And I'll notice their breathing and feed that back to them when they're holding, when they're breathing. Um, so that increases, whoop, I went a little too fast, your capacity to be present um, and mindful. And of course, um, this is really a mindful practice, the somatic based work that we're going to be doing today. Monica, I just want to let you know you're not sharing your screen right now. So I want to make sure you have that opportunity if you wish to do so. Oh, I do. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop and share the screen because I've been talking about here. We'll start with the benefits. Okay. How do you, what do you see now? Um, it's your desktop right now. I think there we go. And we're the presenter view. You want to click that little switch uh, button. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much for letting me know. Okay. And so um, more benefits and these are benefits that are based on my clinical practice, but also we have um, research to support this. So I do a lot of work also with people um, who have an abundance of an, a powerful inner critic or perfectionist. These are often successful professionals um, who may have um, an imposter syndrome or just a type A personality um, and to really learn to have the confidence, the peace of mind and the well-being, regardless of what's going on in our outer environment. That's a tall order. Um, sometimes people come to work with me to access their creativity that they feel has been blocked and we use these somatic approaches. Um, and it's also really practical in terms of clarifying values and resolving inner conflicts so that you can make basic day-to-day -day decisions like do I want to work with do I want to take on this project? Do I want to work with this business partner? Do I want to make this decision? If you resource and access the wisdom that's inherent in our bodies, um, you know, communication is um, mostly nonverbal and, and the memories are held in our bodies um, and um, sort of hidden emotion that is subconscious uh, is hidden in our bodies. And this is a practice to unconceal what is hidden. So in a moment, um, I'm going to start one of three um, somatic practices. And I'll ask you and invite you to have questions at the end so that you can really drop into your body and that the questions can be both from your mind and your body. Um, and first, what we'll do is I'll have a, I have a screen, um, a slideshow that is very evocative of the body. And then I'll do a guided meditation. We'll have time for reflection. I'll be asking you some specific questions. You may wanna have a piece of paper to um, jot down some things that come. Um, and then we can talk, um, have a Q and A and discussion and talk about what came out of that for you and how to use it practically in your life. Okay. 
So I'm going to be reading what's on the slides. You're welcome to close your eyes during this practice. You also can keep them open along and see the visuals. So get comfortable in your chair. Take a deep breath. Have your feet on the floor. Here we go. Imagine having the kind of relationship with your body that you would with a partner or a best friend, one of respect, open-hearted listening, and pleasure in each other's company. That's what's possible with this practice today. So taking a deep breath, feeling into your body. There's more wisdom in your body than in your deepest philosophy. What I love about this is that it's a philosopher who has said that. And breathing, feeling how your breath is moving, your body, your diaphragm, your torso. Attention to the human body brings healing and regeneration. It is through awareness of our body that we remember who we really are. We are recalled to ourselves when we connect to our bodies. And so breathing deeply, connecting in, seeing what's there, The beauty of my body is not measured by age or the size of my clothes, but by the stories that it tells. So ask yourself, what stories are your body, is your body wanting to tell you? What stories have gone unheard and unheeded? Sometimes your body is smarter than you are. Taking a breath, noticing sensation, noticing inner dialogue, and inviting inner dialogue to step aside and be focusing on sensations in your body. So long as we are in conflict with our body, we cannot find peace of mind. Take a moment to digest this. Where are you in conflict with your body? Take a breath, see what arises. Notice what your body wants to say to you. Our bodies are temples, but only if we treat it as one. Taking another breath, opening your senses. What do you notice in your temple today? There is deep wisdom within our very flesh. If we can only come to our senses and feel it. So noticing where those sensations are in your body right now. And then you begin to think with your whole body. And what if sometimes you let yourself live a life guided by your body? How would your day be different? How would your body decide to structure your day? 
think with your whole body. And our body hears everything our mind says. Yes, acknowledging that inherent mind-body connection. So sometimes your mind is full of to-dos, criticisms, criticisms about your body, I'm too short, I need to lose weight. So take a moment today to hear what your body is saying, because if we don't take care of our body, where will we live? And our last slide for the moment by John Muir, the sun shines not on us, but in us. The rivers flow not past, but through us, thrilling, tingling, vibrating every fiber and cell of the substance of our bodies, making them glide and sing. Noticing if there's any tingling in your body, any vibration. Our bodies are 70% water and so we are meant to glide and sing. But it is through this static sitting at our desks that we lose that fluid capacity so taking some time allows us to bring back that fluid capacity naturally. So now I'm gonna invite you to stay in this state that you have cultivated through a few moments of mindfulness. And I'm gonna guide you in asking some questions of your body. We're gonna see what's there. We're gonna see what's there for your body to contribute to you. And some of those messages may have already come. What if you had 24 seven access to the inner wisdom of your combined body-mind? to guide you in all areas of your life. Yes, that is what's possible here. We know from language that we're full of the wisdom of our bodies. I have a gut feeling. I have butterflies in my stomach. This project is a pain in the neck. So what if we could hear the language of our body? We're turning what we know in our culture upside down, right? When instead of our mind speaking, we're gonna invite our body to speak. And I'm gonna invite you to actually step aside your, who you identify yourself to be, the inner healer, the parent, and just put your identity in the background and let the voice of your body come forward in your mind. What is it that your body has been calling you to say? If you were to speak in the first person as your body, what would your body wanna say to you right now? This is an opportunity to be your body versus talk about your body. It's a small sounding shift and yet this shift, really everything is possible. So some of you may have been getting sensations and want to speak to a particular part of your body, you know, your, your stomach, 
um, a pain in the part of your body, an organ that you know is calling for some help. And that's fine. In this process, you can choose a part of your body or you can choose the whole voice of your body to speak. All there is to do is simply breathe and feel and open with a kind of uh, curious, um, kind listening. So often when our body does speak through sensations, we're listening from a place of something's wrong here, that pain that I haven't attended to. And so today I'm inviting you to listen in a different way to listen from non-judgment, from open-hearted curiosity. And what this will do is uncover what is previously hidden. So if you're noticing sensations now of tingling, if you notice that your breathing is changing, you may feel more tired, you may feel more energized, you may have a, a heaviness, all those are signs that your body is present and that you are listening. You might feel a need to move or stretch and feel free to do that as you're listening to my guidance. Whatever you're experiencing now is okay. I'm gonna, in a moment, um, ask some questions for you to ask your body. You may get direct answers in language and for some of you, you may find that the answers come in an image or a, um, like a movie or uh, even just um, colors. So our bodies have mer very many different ways of communicating. And so when I ask you these questions, I'm directly asking and inviting your body to answer. What's important for me to know? Body, what is it? Dear body, what do you want to share with me now? Perhaps it's something that I have known and not listened to. Perhaps it's new information. Letting the rational mind step into the background and making space making space for the body. Body, what do you need from me? What do you need from me today? What do you need from me this week? And when you're ready, one final question. How do I keep listening? Is it in that warm shower? Is it in taking a couple of breaks throughout the day to breathe? Is it in that liminal space before falling asleep? Is it something specific, like go back to that yoga class? Whatever messages you're getting from your body now, it's all good, it's all information. This is just a step in 
dipping into the reservoir of all of who we are. And before I have you step out of this reflective space, I wanna invite you to one more um, embodiment practice, which really helps to deepen and anchor whatever your experience was. And I'm gonna demonstrate um, what you can do. And I want you to remember that nobody is watching you or on a webinar. Um, um, unless you're not in a private space, but I'm going to invite you to embody the sensation or an image or a message from your body, right? So when I was doing this practice yesterday, my body was very clear with me. In the practice, I started being aware of how I really felt tense and tight and so whatever came for you, I'm going to invite you now to take a position that fulfills on, on the message that your body gave you. My body, I am too restricted, too much time indoors, not enough time outdoors exercising. This is what my body said. And this is the, the, the pose that my body took while saying that phrase. You may not have any phrase. Just not thinking, let your body now actually take a pose. We have a different experience when we let our bodies speak to us and amplify that. Okay, and now take a release, let that go. And the next step is if your body had a next step after that first communication, what would it be? What would the next movement or pose be after this one? So for example, for me, like this, I just wanted relief and release. I couldn't even take the time yesterday to get outside for a walk and it was pouring rain. So what my body did instead is it, Right, I just, this is actually a, um, a practice that you can do. Um, I reach up and go, right? that's an energy medicine practice. And then we have a mind-body medicine practice, which I did, which was just getting and shaking and dancing and moving, right? And then I sat back down at my desk for my next client. So take a moment now, what is the next movement that your body most wants to take and take that now. And if you're somewhere quiet, you can make a sound. Releasing sound is a really profound way to amplify this process. And so I want to have a gentle one minute transition so that we can integrate what came from our body's experience with the questions that our mind has for the next portion. And so if you've got a pen and you, um, or you want to write something into your computer right now, if there's something you want to remember from this experience, something that your body told you, you can take a moment to write that now. As an extended practice, what I have uh, people do is uh, sometimes is write with their non-dominant hand. That's more in a workshop or on their own. We won't have time for that today. But what that does is let the non-dominant part of you come out and speak. And if your eyes aren't open, if you've chosen to stay in your meditative space, gently open your eyes and to get grounded, look around your room, find a shape and name that shape to yourself. I see a circle, I see a rectangle. Find a color and name that color. 
Take a deep breath, feel your feet on the floor. And we're gonna shift it to um, a, a discussion and a Q and A. Um, and I'm going to share some practical um, ways and more which this work can be used. Um, and I'm also I'm gonna talk about the next step so what the next step in this practice would, would look like, what I would do with clients is then facilitate a process where I am speaking to that um, client's body or body part or even personality part. Um, so some of you might have heard of um, parts work. Uh, one of the examples is that uh, a parts work is um, internal family systems. Some of you might have heard of that. It's, it's a um, evidence-based practice. And that's really what all of this is preparing us to do in the next step is where you actually, um, the practice that I have is called voice dialogue and body dialogue. And the, I studied with my mentors, Alan Sidra Stone and um, a body dialogue pr uh, practice with Judith Stone. Uh, to be able to do this. And so I, as a facilitator, reflect um, back and create space for the body to come forward. And that's a very powerful process. It's not uncommon for people to uh, become tearful, um, to become energized, to have strong emotions um, as they do this practice. So I'm gonna pause before I um, do anything else and just allow a little bit more integration. I think there was a question in the, in, uh, an invitation in the chat to um, share what your experience was. So you can share your experience, you can share how you're feeling now, if you had a word to describe what you experienced or what you're exp um, feeling now, throw it into the chat. And Monica, we also have a question coming in that while folks are putting um, any commentary into the chat, uh, Ruby has asked, could you speak more about your work with imposter syndrome and type A folks who carry a lot of tr tension and stress and just add to it with their inner dialogue? Beautiful question, thank you for that. Um, so yes, I, I had a client this week as a manager for a Fortune 500 company with a lot of stress. And so the way that I work with, um, with him and with, with is to really have people be in their bodies while they're talking to me about the stress and notice what's going on. So it's a real time practice and then discover for themselves, what are the practices that are particularly unique to them that are helpful for calming? Um, and, and you asked about, um, that's really good for anxiety and that's really good for type A. Now, imposter syndrome, that's where um, uh, people are, uh, um, elevated and promoted um, because of their skill and expertise and you get to a high enough level where you think I should know this by now uh, it's not okay for me to not know or to ask and I deal with that a lot in clients it's particularly ironically enough in those folks who are successful who are bright um, who tend to be perfection, perfectionists and are expecting and demanding so much for themselves. And so what I do in that situation is I actually ask to speak directly with the inner critic and the inner pusher um, and the inner perfectionist. Those are a trifecta of very powerful voices that are supported by the dominant paradigm of our culture in terms of work harder, do more, it's not good enough. And so you learn to separate from those voices. That's the power of embodying those parts is that you embody the part that is dominant and you embody the opposite part. So the opposite of inner critic would be an inner self-compassion. And I've taken and studied self-compassion um, with Kristen Neff's work and Chris Germer, it's fabulous work. It's in fact, 
um, part of the, their work, I have give, been given permission to put in to the guided meditation that I'm offering to you attendees free today for those people here who are live. It's some really deep evidence-based work about the power of self-compassion. So for those in the imposter syndrome, self-compassion becomes a piece of our work. Um, separating your sense of identity and your sense of self-confidence from what you do and what you produce to who you are. Because if you identify um, with only what you produce and how successful and productive you are, you're actually giving your power away to how other people see you, to how your work is being received. And so we focus internally in how to um, have that voice of um, inner sense of well-being from within, kind of regardless of the circumstances. And that just takes awareness, um, mindfulness, um, openness, and practice. So I'm seeing bliss come through, so relaxed, and your body feeling grateful for the listening and the giving of what was requested. Yeah, so we're actually developing a relationship with our body as we would with an, an intimate, someone we really care about. Are there any um, other questions, Tabby? I have a, um, a, a couple of kind of case, uh, a case study to share. It would be great to share the case studies. And I, I do really wanna just commend you um, with your work around imposter syndrome. And, and I think right now, particularly just in our culture, it, um, just even naming that, it's, it's really powerful. Um, I think many, um, people find themselves in this space of um, the the stress that we kind of take on from society and and then how we internalize that. And so I really uh, I love this approach. I think it's really um, empowering, and I just really thank you for the the work in this area. You know, it, this is this is the work that made me um, shift from being an organizational consultant, which was my early career, just doing management training and and into, because it was so powerful um, that, I, that I decided to go to graduate school and become a licensed psychotherapist so that I could work um, more with the psyche and then combine that also with, you know, how, how do you, people are using this for their own personal development as well as, you know, professional development. Yeah, so, so wonderful yeah. to share some cases. Thank you. So. Yeah, yeah. So I have this um, really interesting one to share. Uh, I have I had a, a management consultant um, come to me, you know, maybe seven years ago, um, and he he knew about my work, so he had enough self awareness to know that he was experiencing some very physical symptoms. He had a lot of pain in his um, belly, really difficult digestion, um, impaired sleep, um, brain fog, and you know, this um, lots of bloating. Um, so this, um, this experience was so uh, debilitating for him. He was engaged to be married and he actually had to um, cancel the wedding. And yet he, you know, he knew that there was something to this, um, that this kind of mysterious ailment that came. And I know for functional medicine practitioners, you know, this sounds like you want to get in there. It's, it's intestinal permeability, maybe it's, you know, IBS, and that can all be true. And then we know there is the emotional component. So he, I asked to speak with the part of him that was hurting most, which at that time was his belly, and he was having lots of abdominal pain. And what was the pain saying? And it turned out when the pain spoke in first person directly, it said, I don't want you to get married. I'm afraid of you getting married. You haven't addressed the symptoms and the issues that caused your last divorce. And I want you to, I'm waking you up and stopping you. This is worrisome. So um, we had a, a, a couple of sessions so that he could get clear what the specific concerns were and what to do. He um, then went and sat down and had a heart to heart with his fiance and 
um, they made some agreements, he got clear, they rescheduled the wedding, they had the wedding, before the wedding, all of his symptoms completely disappeared. Um, and as I said, that was about seven years ago and I, I talked with him about a year ago and he was happily married. So this is, is such an extraordinary um, story of someone who really, you know, uh, you know I worked with uh, um, in my role as a mind-body coach because I do coaching in addition to psychotherapy. And we had just a few sessions because he, was, he had already done some work with me. Um, so it doesn't always happen that dramatically and that fast. Um, and yet it can. So um, recently I uh, worked with a physician who was wanting to shift her focus in, in her career. She's um, had, um, she's an integrative medicine physician who then learned um, some, some new skills and new practices that she wanted to bring in. Um, and she had some resistance to doing that, some sort of old messages. Um, she also wanted to start doing teaching. Um, and uh, this is actually coming out in a podcast um, that if you um, email me, I can, when it comes out, I can let you know, because she is being, she and I are both interviewed on this podcast about how this process of voice dialogue and body dialogue helped her to become um, clear of her career focus um, and start having um, patients that are focusing on what she wants to focus and not just be so specifically lab oriented. And then when I talked with her, so I talked with her inner teacher that was emerging and then I talked with her inner physician and her inner physician was actually really on board and said, yeah, I, I, um, I would like to practice in a different way. I would like to bring more creativity into my practice and outsource some of my lab work time. So you can see that this has a huge um, wide variety from you know, physical ailments um, to relationship and um, uh, professional decision-making. And, and in the um, description that I said of, of the guy with, um, you know, who we think may have, um, could have had an IBS or intestinal permeability, it's not that I say don't go to the doctor. I work in combination and in, in tandem with medical professionals. And I love working with integrative health professionals because you get it already that there is this mind-body connection. So if you have um, patients who aren't making progress, um, those are top candidates for this work. If you have um, patients who are um, just even going, going through a detox and they want to learn to do some emotional, spiritual, um, psychological detox at the same time they're doing physical detox, this is really great work. Um, yeah, so I'm going to uh, pause again and see if there are um, questions. Beautiful comments about um, recognizing the negative self-talk. That is the first step, absolutely. And realizing the lack of self-compassion. You know, that is, that's a beautiful comment because it really speaks to all of us. Um, it's so universal in our culture. Uh, there isn't anything in schools taught about self-compassion. Um, we, it's not necessarily uh, taught in our family. It, um, even the idea of compassion for others is generally, um, has been associated with, you know, being in church or, or, or whatever kind of spiritual tradition. Um, and so we're, we're now having compassion sweep, begin, very, very beginning to sweep through. I've heard mayors, several mayors of cities talk about what if we had compassionate cities? What would, um, what would our policies and, and, um, and, laws be for our cities if we were to bring compassion. And so it's learning to bring compassion into ourselves that's so critical and also seeing the, ba the barriers to that. 
what are the barriers to self-compassion? And there's a lot of myths about that that we kind of blow up when we do the self-compassion work. Yes, I'm curious, Jess has invited you to share thoughts and feelings that came up from your experience. We've heard a few of those. Um, sometimes this practice um, brings up uh, more conflict. It brings up some difficult feelings. Um, I had a client this week who was just in tears with the sadness of the recognition of the time that she had lost. Um, for her, we were working on her ability to assert herself in, uh, in her business relationship with her business partner. Um, and so, uh, you know, sometimes when you begin this process, part of it is, is, um, is the recognition of um, what hasn't been. Um, and that's okay. We make space for that and we, we bring self-compassion to that. My body is telling me to eat slowly and without doing anything else. That's so beautiful. It sounds easy, doesn't it? You know, I, I have been watching myself this week, um, you know, particularly since the news in the last few months, you know, it's like this addiction, sit down, eat, um, and watch what's going on in the news. Now notice your digestion when you do that. And you may have heard of the research about, um, just taking a few moments of gratitude before you eat and really just several deep breaths, bringing um, presence, bringing mindfulness. Where did this food come from? How did it get to you? What smells are coming? And um, sometimes when I invite people to get present um, and do mindful eating, you know, it's too much to have the whole meal be, be mindful. So if that feels like too much, you start out in chunks. That's the way that you make change, right? And so you can start by having a few minutes before you eat and the first few bites be your mindful time. And some people prefer to have a particular meal be their mindful meal. Thanks for bringing that up. Monica, I just wanted to, um just highlight the, the, the model really of bringing um, different interprofessional integrative practitioners together. And I think just what you're sharing is just such a beautiful example of that, um, working closely with um, integrative and functional uh, naturopathic doctors and really creating a way for um, the patient to get the best care. And I think this, you know, this is such deep work. And I think, you know, my hope is that as we um, really work to transform our healthcare system, um, as well as even in the education system, I, my children, I see are starting to get much more um, education around how to really be in touch with their feelings, understand those feelings, be able to identify that and identify their own emotional and mental um, well-being so that they don't really, you know, develop patterns like many of us have that get us to imposter syndrome or, or other challenges. Um, so I, I really do think that um, the work that uh, you're highlighting here is really what AIHM is, is all about, um, that interprofessional partnership um, in service of uh, the patient. So I really appreciate this work again that you're doing. You know, Tabby, it's, it's my fantasy to be part of an integrative clinic where, you know, we work really closely, like the same level of closeness that I had with um, as when I was doing wellness coaching at Kaiser Permanente and I could, you know, reach out and talk to the physician, um, th that kind of um, interaction when I, when I was doing that, it was just beginning of that practice. So uh, physicians weren't really used to uh, working with a wellness coach now in the integrative medicine, they are. Um, and, and so, yes, it's, it's absolutely, um, it's my passion. And what you're speaking to is, is emotional intelligence, really. And it's beginning to come into the mainstream culture. I'm thinking of the movie Inside Out, 
Yes, of course. <laughs> inside out with all of the, the parts, the, the afraid part and the happy part and you know, the angry part. Yes, that speaks to the sense that we are all made up of subpersonalities. Um, and that we aren't one individual. And when you think about any time you've been in conflict about something, that's really two different parts of you that are warring with one another because they have different values. And you've internalized that from society, from your family, from your experiences, from your ancestry, right? And so um, in this work, the definition of consciousness in part is the capacity to hold the tension of the opposites, right? And so we're developing that which we have um, hidden, which has been um, in hiding. And, and so that we are really free to bring out all of our um, capacity. That's right. I mean, just the emotional intelligence, you know, developing um, and honoring that we are holistic beings, that mind, body, spirit, emotional, all of that is important and really creating that space where we're attending to those different parts of ourselves from the time we're young. Um, that is truly, you know, the holistic um, vision is to really to do that. And, and more and more, we're, we're seeing that. We're seeing that, uh, the beginnings of that. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about this work um, and, and just about the tools. You have so many tools. Maybe you could take a few minutes. Um, you know, we have a few more minutes before we'll have to wrap up. Just sharing some of the tools that you have. I know that you were um, wanting to share some things with the community. Yeah, so, so, so basically, in, um, I, I'm developing now um, coaching programs so that, you know, people who are um, not, I have one foot in the psychotherapy world and one foot in coaching because of my corporate experience. Um, and so, um, you know, if you work, um, if you do a three months, um, some people like to take it slower and do it in six months, but I have a step-by-step -step program that includes the practices we're doing today. Um, but what's really unique that I have not found elsewhere about um, the way that I work is that I am guiding um, you to from your own wisdom to develop your own um, wellness self-care plan. And so that you are sourcing yourself. And that happens when you slow down and when you can separate from the judgment and discover the wisdom that is already there. Um, so it's kind of a beautiful marriage between um, uh, evidence-based structures and practices that um, I have been um, learning and cultivating, developing for over 20 years, um, plus the wisdom that you bring together uh, to develop something that's, you know, customized with a foundation of, of evidence-based practice and um, neuropsychology. So that's available one-on-one um, -on -one with me right now, um, coaching. And then if you would uh, like to talk about how that could be of help to you or to um, friends, family, patients, clients, you are welcome to um, schedule with me to just uh, send me an email uh, that says consult and it's complimentary consult or you can call me and um, the number, the phone number is in the chat and I'll also put up um, a slide. Um, and I have a, um, I'll put up the slide now and then if we have time, I have a little um, po a poem to end with, to leave you with. Oh, you know, hold on a second, I don't think. Okay. You'd have to reshare your screen if you want to share that slide. I am going to do that. Okay. And we, there we just there we go. Great. Yep. So that's um, how to get a hold of me. 
And then again, um, definitely make use of this for, for live attendees. Um, I, um, I want to uh, gift you with this guided um, practice that is specifically designed for healthcare practitioners and um, those who take care of others. Uh, and it's, it's really great for stress reduction, for um, uh, per burnout prevention, um, and that you get by the, um, in, in the chat, there'll be a um, coupon code for you to go to my website and get that. Um, it's called, I can't see if I can remember the name of it, um, Healing for Healthcare Practitioners, Helpers, and Everyday Heroes. Um, and um, that, that's really out of appreciation for who you are and what you do. Okay, I want to see if there's any, do we have time for any more questions? Uh, we, we actually don't, unfortunately, but if you, um, I think you said you would like to wrap up with a poem and then um, we just have a few announcements before we end today. Okay. So this is the first two stanzas by Emily Cater. We are asked to arrive here, earth side to occupy every inch of the body we are given, to learn its language, its meaning, its gifts. We are asked to use it as a compass, to harbor us in safety, to lead us through the wild. We are asked to care for this place with the grit and grace of dirt on our hands. We are asked to speak, to give voice to the voiceless. So I wanna acknowledge you for doing that today. And I really wanna thank AIHM for the fabulous work you're doing in so many different areas. I'm very much appreciative of uh, being here today. Thank you, Monica. And thank you for this really just beautiful way to, to end our week um, and with our community um, and uh, with this just wonderful, wonderful work that you're doing. Um, Jess, would you be able to share the, your screen? Okay, wonderful. So um, what's next? Um, you know, as the Academy, we're really dedicated to bringing you all um, this continued, uh, these continued services with our um, AIHM Monday meditations and the Friday wellness webinars. Um, if you are one of our membership benefits is actually um, being able to um, present on uh, the wellness webinar. So if you're interested in joining the community, uh, please get in touch with us. Um, we're so excited next week to have one of um, uh, our speakers, Sandra Amato, who is a graduate from the fellowship program. She'll be leading us in our Monday meditation. Um, and just, she has a really, just lovely, lovely, um, shares a lovely practice with us. So I really welcome you to join us at 8.30 a.m. on Monday, February 1st to start our week off. And then um, Friday, we'll have a wellness webinar guest speaker, Heather Zawicki, who is in our community. She actually teaches in our fellowship program, just a phenomenal, phenomenal um, educator. She has her PhD in immunology. And she's going to be presenting on the COVID vaccine mechanisms and myths um, at 12 o'clock next week on February 5th. So I welcome you all to join us. Um, please connect with us uh, if you go to youtube.com slash AIHM Global and join our channel. You will get all of the videos for free after they're recorded if you want to um, revisit them or share them with your community. Um, we really just want to get this information out to as many people as possible. If you enjoyed the webinar, um, consider joining the integrative health community. Um, you can become an AIHM member and we have lots of membership benefits and really we're about building a global integrative community to help transform healthcare. Um, so join a local chapter or students, student alliance and you can connect with us on any social media platform of your choosing. Um, and please just um, continue to show up and work with us. And Monica, Eldon, I just really wanna thank you again. Uh, this was such a wonderful 
way to end our week. And I really appreciate all that you're doing for our integrative community. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.